Hi guys, I'm a Forester here. Now a few weeks ago we looked at this 1942 Lee Enfield World War II rifle. Today though we're going to look at what I think is the more interesting rifle in this pair and that's this bolt action Arasaka Type 44 carbine. Now like the Lee Enfield this Japanese rifle was brought back from World War II by my father-in-law who fought in the Pacific Theater and he was part of the forces occupying Japan after their surrender. Now this particular rifle was likely surrendered rather than taken on the battlefield and I can say that because of this reason right here and I'll have to give you a close-up but right here would be the Japanese Emperor's seal which was a chrysanthemum and all you can see of that chrysanthemum are some outer petals right there on both sides. It was ground off and so if a rifle was surrendered the uh, Japanese were allowed to grind that chrysanthemum off. But if it was taken on the battlefield, that chrysanthemum would likely be intact. Now this is a short rifle at around 38 inches long. The barrel is around 19 inches long. And it's a good six inches shorter overall than the Lee Enfield. It was designed for cavalry use and the major change from earlier models was the addition of this locking bayonet. Now the bayonet locks in place when it's stored under this forearm stock so the soldier doesn't poke himself. But by pressing this release right here, the bayonet can swing out and lock into place in attack mode. It extends 14 and 3 fourths inches beyond the muzzle. Now I would say this bayonet design is overbuilt for heavy use. This is actually the third variation of the bayonet design. Earlier variations had problems with the stock splitting right here because these screws were too close together. So later variations spread that stress out over a greater area by widening the screws. Now this is the third variation because they extended the housing in this circular fashion right here to get a little extra width. Now this hook right here, or actually called a quillion, is interesting. It seems like it would get in the way. It really sticks out there, but it was primarily used in rifle fencing to hook the opposing soldier's bayonet and then with a twist to hopefully disarm the opponent. Now, since we won the war, I assume this wasn't a game changer. Now, because the bayonet occupies the business end of this rifle, the Japanese had to move storage for the cleaning rod to the other end of the gun, and they came up with this very interesting moving door design. It's operated with this lever right here and by rotating that lever up the door opens and reveals a hidden compartment. Now inside there is a metal sleeve that holds a two-piece cleaning rod. It's a very interesting design and I don't think it weakens the strength of the stock at all. Let's look at this bolt action next. Now this gun originally came with a dust cover to keep any dirt out from the action. It was mounted right here, but it was removed and lost somewhere in this gun's past. Now this action is nowhere near as smooth as the Lee Enfield that we looked at in a recent video. And it essentially has a lock on empty feature due to this magazine design. So you have to press down on the magazine spring to be able to close the bolt. Let's look at the safety and it's built right here into the back of the bolt. I don't find it that easy to operate, but you have to press in and turn clockwise and the gun won't fire. To be able to fire the gun, you release the bolt and the gun fires. I don't find it that easy to operate in this particular rifle, but I assume it was easier when this gun was a little bit newer. The magazine holds five rounds of 6.5 by 50 millimeter. It's fed from the top, but the magazine can be removed from below for cleaning. You press on this lever right here, and the magazine will just pop out. And then it just clips back in place easily. Okay, let's look at the sights now. And these are special sights for this carbine. The rear sights pop up and these are adjustable for shooting out to 400 yards. The front sights are fixed 
and they're shielded for protection, which I think is probably important, especially with that bayonet on the end. Next, let's look at the serial number and other markings on this rifle. Now, the serial number of this gun is 7362, and I believe it was made in a second run of rifles at the Kikura Arsenal in the early 1940s. And this is the symbol right here for the Kikura Arsenal. The Japanese also used prefixes to designate production runs, and this symbol right here indicated a run of 9,000 rifles made during World War II at the Kikura plant. Now, there were a total of just under 92,000 of these Type 44 carbines manufactured between 1911 and the end of World War II, which makes them fairly uncommon. Most were made at the Tokyo Arsenal, with only 22,000 made at Kokura. They stayed in use in Japan through World War II. Now, like the Lee Enfield, I'd love to know more about the history of this Arasaka Type 44 carbine. Somehow, both of these rifles found their way from Iwo Jima or Japan to South Carolina, probably brought back by my father-in-law. Now, this Arasaka has been fired. There are stories of him bracing it against a tree to test fire it. I think he wanted the tree between him and the rifle just in case it exploded. I don't think he had to worry about it as it's built like a tank. Y'all take care.